Hello everybody and thanks for joining this short video in which we're going to cover improved scaffolding and uh, development workflows that we released as part uh, of Webini 5.9.0 release. This video is going to be divided into two sections. In the first section we're going to talk a bit about the existing issues uh, that our users were facing and uh, how we managed to tackle them. And uh, in the second part uh, we're going to see it all in action in a form of a short uh, demo. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look. Based on the uh, feedback that we were receiving from our users, uh, we've discovered five uh, key issues that were present in the existing uh, scaffolding utilities and uh, related development workflows. Uh, first issue was complex Elasticsearch setup. If you were using the uh, GraphQL API service scaffold, uh, which basically uh, creates a set of uh, CRUD uh, query and mutation uh, GraphQL operations. You may have noticed that uh, the generated code actually interacts with two databases, the, uh, the DynamoDB and Elasticsearch. And uh, the reason why we went with Elasticsearch there is simply because of its uh, great uh, querying capabilities. And uh, while that is the case with Elasticsearch, we've noticed that in a lot of cases uh, developers just didn't have a real need for it. Um, and uh, not only that, uh, the code that the scaffold generated was uh, definitely complex. Uh, it required, uh, you know, the data to be stored into databases. Uh, uh, it sh had to be updated uh, accordingly, and so on. And uh, with that, we also had a com complex testing setup. So. In order to run the tests, you would have to have a DynamoDB locally running and uh, Elasticsearch. DynamoDB was not such a big problem because it was already being included with the uh, just plugin that we've included with the scaffold. Uh, but Elasticsearch, uh, oftentimes it didn't just work on user's machine uh, and then users had to run uh, an Elasticsearch service on their own, which is certainly not the develop developer experience that we wanted to have. So. Uh, in order to tackle this, we simply said, hey, let's remove the Elasticsearch completely out of the picture uh, while maintaining the same feature set. And of course, uh, let the user actually require the Elasticsearch, use it if only if needed. And for that, we're going to have a separate tutorial, uh, you know, that will cover all of the uh, required steps. Moving on, uh, the existing scaffolds, uh, once they were done generating code, uh, required the user to uh, you know, perform a couple of manual steps. And uh, in case of the mentioned GraphQL API service scaffold, uh, users actually had to go into their admin area, uh, React application, and uh, execute a uh, generated uh, GraphQL mutation called install. And uh, this install mutation would actually create a needed um, uh, Elasticsearch index in the background. Without uh, performing this step, Basically, none of the uh, newly generated uh, GraphQL query mutation operations would work. So that's definitely something uh, that we've seen as a friction in the overall developer experience. With that, uh, we've also uh, we've also seen um, that uh, the, the the existing scaffolds, so not only GraphQL API service but also the extend admin area scaffold. Uh, both required the developer to manually register the generated plugins. So in both processes, uh, a couple of plugins would be registered. Then developers had to go into their code, manually type the import statements, and actually register the plugin uh, in their code. Uh, that was not just such a big problem, but still we wanted to have a, a process that's as slick as possible. Next up are monorepo hurdles, and this is a tough one. Uh, monorepos are hard. Uh, in order to efficiently work with monorepos, user, users have to know their internals, and they have to know how they work. Uh, we wanted to abstract that away from users, and uh, because of this, we've decided to take a different approach when it comes to uh, the actual locations uh, where the, where the uh, application code is being generated right now. Uh, and I mean uh, prior to 5.9 uh, version, uh, all of the code would be generated in a separate as a separate package, right? Uh, in a folder called packages, uh, that's by default, um, in the project root. And that would work, uh, and uh, it would satisfy the monorepo constraints. And uh, but but on the other hand, it uh, again. Uh, 
posed a couple of uh, developer experience problems and uh, one of the problem is uh, the code being dislocated uh, in your uh, repository, right? You would have, for example, the GraphQL API uh, that's located within your API project application, which is located in your API folder. So you have API slash code slash GraphQL. That's the place where your GraphQL API is located. Uh, with that, the uh, the previous version of the scaffold would actually um, generate code in a separate packages folder. So in the end, you end up with two uh, two folders that one one is importing the other, and that's something uh, we've seen users uh, would get confused sometimes about, and that we wanted to make that easier. And of course, there are a couple of other problems we've seen numerous times uh, users approaching us saying. Hey, I've uh, you know made a code change, and uh, the code change just didn't wasn't reflected in my browser or in my GraphQL API side. And that was mainly because of the misuse of the uh, WebAnny Watch command or previously the WebAnny Workspaces command. In order to run all uh, run watch sessions on all of your packages that you might have in your project, uh, upon running the uh, watch command, you actually had to um, uh, list all of the packages that you want to watch. Um, just by uh, talking about this, uh, we can see that it's really complex and something that should not be uh, in the developer workflow uh, while they're, you know, while developers are working uh, on their application. So basically, uh, from now on, uh, all of the files will be actually generated within the project application they are targeting. So, if, for example, if I'm uh, creating a new uh, GraphQL API, I'm actually I'm extending the existing GraphQL API that you know comes the, uh, by default with every WebAnny project. If I'm doing that, all of the code will be actually uh, located within the GraphQL API folder. Again, that's API slash code slash GraphQL, and we'll see that in the demo that follows. So it'll be a little bit more clear. And uh, next up, uh, we have uh, two scaffolds for a single task. Uh, basically, in order to extend admin area, uh, which uh, consists of React uh, code, user interface code, and the backend GraphQL API code, users had to uh, uh, run two separate scaffolds. And uh, two separate scaffolds for essentially doing a single task. And uh, that would sometimes also confuse the users. They would just, for example, scaffold the front end part and then because the backend is not existing yet, they will receive all kinds of errors. And uh, yeah, potentially uh, that will leave the confuser, uh, the user confused. So we've decided to essentially just, you know, incorporate uh, both pieces into a single uh, scaffold. Uh, so the new extend admin area scaffold will uh, perform both parts. It will uh, generate all of the uh, React application code, admin area React application code, and the GraphQL API. Uh, portion of it. So we hope that will uh, make this whole scaffolding process a bit easier for users. And uh, last but not least, uh, we had complex testing workflows before, uh, something I already um, touched upon in uh, in the first issue that we've been talking about. Um, yeah, uh, we didn't have a good solution back then, and uh, we were constantly rethinking revisiting this in our minds how to actually make this uh, better and uh, the main problem with the existing solution is that uh, in order to run tests you have to have as mentioned uh, locally running services DynamoDB, Elasticsearch and so on uh, but that will get you only so far um, what if I wanted to you know test a asynchronous workflow for example I uploaded a file to an S3 and then I expect a certain lambda function to be triggered how can I test that right uh, there are all kinds of other scenarios that you might have, and uh, not only that. Uh, what what about the uh, testing the cloud infrastructure that's being used uh, for your GraphQL API, right? Uh, developing serverless applications applications is not just about you know writing code and testing code. You also have to take cloud infrastructure into consideration, and uh, your tests have to also to also have to account that right they also have to ensure that your graph that your cloud infrastructure is uh, properly configured so all in all uh, we've decided to completely redesign the uh, testing workflows and uh, with the new scaffolds you will also receive a, a three three example tests that you can use uh, you know as a reference uh, in further development or you can just expand them that's also fine uh, you will you will receive one end uh, one unit test, 
uh, one integration and one end-to-end -end test. Each test has its own pros and cons. It serves its own purpose. I'm not going to go too much into detail uh, here because, yeah, we have uh, some information on our documentation portal. Uh, but with these tests, user will be aware that they exist and uh, with the documentation part, as mentioned, uh, they will have the necessary tools and, uh, you know, methodology in order to properly uh, and efficiently test their serverless applications. And yeah, those were the uh, five issues that we've discovered uh, while working with our users, while receiving uh, their feedback. Hopefully this will make things a bit easier and uh, we will see actually that in the demo that follows. So let's take a look at that. All right, in front of us we have a new 5.9.0 WebUni project and uh, we're going to use the extend admin area scaffold in order to create a new admin area module and of course the supporting GraphQL query and the mutation operations. And uh, before doing that, uh, we're just going to run a couple of watch commands here on the right side of the screen. Uh, by the way, I'm using iTerm uh, in order to create uh, a couple of terminal sessions nicely aligned like this. And uh, yeah, in the top left pane, we're going to run this yarn webinar watch apps slash admin dash dash env dev um, command, uh, which will basically just initiate a new watch session on our uh, admin area react application and uh, which is located in this apps slash admin slash uh, code folder. On the other hand, uh, we're going to run this uh, yarn webinar watch api slash code slash graphql command again with the same environment that is dev and uh, this will just initiate uh, another watch session on our graphql api. Uh, graphql api is actually located within this, within this api slash code slash graphql folder and uh, this is the reason why we actually didn't uh, just type api here uh, because that would uh, initiate a watch session on the whole API project application, which is certainly something uh, that we don't need. Uh, we only want to uh, watch the code for our uh, GraphQL API. And another thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, running these two commands is not really necessary. Uh, I just wanted to do that uh, purely for demonstration purposes. We'll see later uh, while the scaffold is generating application code. Uh, these two watch commands will pick, uh, you know, created code changes and will build the code and uh, deploy it into the cloud accordingly. So that's going to be something uh, that's nice to see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to write this, uh, I'm going to run this uh, WebNU watch command here and uh, now we can proceed uh, uh, with the scaffolding. So uh, in this uh, bottom pane here, I'm going to run the yarn WebNU, uh, sorry, yarn WebNU scaffold command. All right, here's the list and uh, in front of us we have four available scaffolds and uh, you, you can notice that uh, with each scaffold uh, we have a short description now um, and also where possible we added this learn more link uh, which once clicked of course will uh, navigate the user to the relevant documentation article. And uh, yeah, uh, with this list uh, we're gonna just uh, choose the first item here which is extend admin area. Once selected, uh, we are presented with three questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, where is our GraphQL API plugins folder? And uh, the default value is uh, fine. Uh, it's API slash code slash GraphQL slash SRC. And inside of that, we have this uh, plugins folder here. So we can go with the, the, with the default value here. And uh, the next question is pretty, pretty similar to the first one. Again, it's asking us uh, where is uh, the plugins folder of our admin area uh, react application and again the default value is just fine we have this apps admin code src and then inside of that we have this plugins folder here so again pressing enter will be just fine finally uh, we get to enter the name of the initial data model uh, for this demo we're gonna go with car manufacturer and uh, uh, it's just a note that uh, you know the the uh, name that you enter here will basically dictate uh, all of the labels that you might have um, 
in your admin area, for example, the label in the main menu, the labels, labels uh, on the buttons, uh, routes as well, and uh, on the GraphQL API side, uh, this is uh, this will be included in all names of uh, GraphQL queries and mutations. For example, list car manufacturers, create car manufacturer, delete car manufacturer, and so on. You get the point. And uh, this is something that's uh, you know to be expected. So we're going to press enter here and uh, that's basically it. Now we are faced uh, with a confirmation screen uh, basically telling us uh, where uh, all of the uh, plugins will be uh, generated. Uh, we already talked about that so for now we're just going to type in Y as in yes and press enter. So scaffolding has begun and uh, we're going to wait for a couple of seconds for it to finish. And uh, as it's uh, doing its thing, we should be able to see additional output in uh, uh, different panes that we also have here. So scaffolding has finished. And uh, as we can see, uh, we have the next step section here, which is uh, often useful for new, uh, new users, telling them uh, what are the watch commands that they can run and uh, start a development. And uh, we also have a couple of links that will you know, lead the user to uh, additional documentation articles where they can find more information. But if you take a look at the panes, uh, the build panes and deploy pane, we can see we have additional output here um, informing the user that uh, changes have been detected and uh, code has been compiled successfully. Uh, we have that here uh, as well in this uh, build pane as well. And at the bottom we see a couple of updates were uh, performed. Uh, basically uh, the code has been automatically redeployed into our cloud infrastructure. So with all of that, uh, essentially that means that we should have everything up and running if we were to open our admin area application. So uh, let's take a look uh, what happened there. Uh, we're gonna visit our we're gonna visit our admin area uh, via this local host at port 3001. Okay, we are at the main screen, and uh, if we were to open this uh, main menu here, sure enough, we can see we have a new car manufacturer section, and uh, by clicking on this link, we can go, uh, we, can, we are navigated to the main CRUD view, uh, which is essentially a view that consists of two sections. On the left side, we have a simple data list, uh, which, of course, we can use to list uh, car manufacturer entries, and on the right side, uh, if we were to click on this button, we would get a simple form with which we can create or update existing uh, car manufacturer entries. And for this demo, let's just uh, type in BMW. This is a short description. And if we were to press Save Car Manufacturer button, sure enough, uh, we have this new car manufacturer entry in the list here, which basically means everything works uh, correctly and uh, from this point, uh, we can continue with further development. We can basically expand the car manufacturer entity with new uh, fields. We could add maybe some uh, business logic uh, processes or maybe introduce new cloud infrastructure resources if we need uh, and uh, so on. And uh, yeah, with, with uh, this, uh, I guess uh, this is the end of this demo. Uh, I'm happy I've been able to show you this today and I'm, I hope uh, that you might find this useful. Uh, in any case, if you have any feedback, uh, comments, suggestions, or, or even a critic, uh, yeah, feel free to post them on our Slack, on our community Slack. We're always there. It's uh, webinning.com slash Slack. Uh, we'll be glad to have you there. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot again for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you in another one. Thanks a lot.